Hi, my name is Domenico Damari, and I'm a mechanical engineer here at PTC Education. This week, my coworkers and I were challenged to complete a phone stand design project. The goal of the project was to use CAD to design a phone holder. Let's take a look at our designs and discuss how we got there. As engineers, when we start a new project, we follow the engineering design process. There are a lot of different variations to the process, but in general, it boils down to a few simple steps. First, we identify and research the problem. Then, we can imagine different solutions. Afterwards, we can select our best solution, create a new prototype, test our prototype, and then improve our design. During the identifying and research phase, we come up with a list of criteria and constraints. Criteria are things that the design needs to do in order to be considered successful. For example, a criteria for a phone stand is must support the weight of a standard phone. Constraints, on the other hand, are limitations that are placed on the project. An example of a constraint would be the one week I gave my coworkers to complete their design. Now that we know more about the engineering design process, let's take a look at my design and how my criteria and constraints affected it. So here it is. I wanted to be able to fit this on my desk where I had a spot four by four inches. In this case, the spot area was a design constraint. I also wanted to be able to charge my phone. And so charging my phone is a design criteria. You can see here on the bottom where I have a cutout for my charging cable. By modeling my design in Onshape first, I was able to make sure that the design filled the criteria and constraints. I even modeled my phone to make sure that the charging port lined up and then I liked the way it looked. Having an Onshape model was also important because early on, I decided that I wanted to 3D print my phone stand. Different manufacturing methods like 3D printing are actually constraints too. Since I wanted the surface to be smooth and for the printing time to be shorter, I had to design the phone stand so that it didn't require supports as it was printed. Creating a 3D model also makes it easy to make changes after you test it. Let's see what my phone is like on the stand. It's a little bit wobbly. Looks like I'll have to go back and redesign it. Now that we've seen my design, let's go ahead and take a look at some of my coworkers. Now I'm here with my coworker, Drew. Thanks for the invite, Dom. This project was a lot of fun. This is what I made. So first thing I notice is yours looks a lot different than mine. You chose to laser cut yours? I did. Somebody had the 3D printer booked all week, so I decided I might as well use the laser cutter. Well, you know, sometimes 3D printing, it can take a while. Did you have to change your design at all because of the laser cutting? I definitely did. Our laser cutter only can cut flat sheets, so I had to make a design that could bend. Interesting. So you were able to remove material here for the bends to get that to happen. That's really cool. Did you have any criteria that affected your design? I did. I really wanted my design to be able to fold flat so that I could bring it with me when I traveled. So when I take it and I pull on these two tabs, the model will flatten out and I can easily store it in my backpack. Whoa, so how did you design it to do that? So I used a lot of the sheet metal modeling techniques that you can find in Onshape. That allowed me to model both the folded and the unfolded design at the same time. It also allowed me to make sure that it would fit inside of the laser cutter. Once that was done, I exported the flat sheet model and sent it off to the laser cutter. Well, that's really cool and I like how it came out. Thanks for coming today and showing us your design. Thanks for having me, Dom. Now I'm here with my other coworker, Mackenzie. Hi Dom, thanks for having me. What do you think of my design? Wow, it looks completely different. How'd you come up with that design? Well, since you spent so much time using the 3D printers, I had to wait until later in the week. Since I was crunched for time, I couldn't do any test prints. So I decided to use generative design to help me out. Ah, uh, I think I've heard of that before, but could you explain a little bit more about what generative design is and how it works? Yeah, generative design is a cutting edge software where you can take a starting model and add some physical constraints, forces, and assign a material and a manufacturing method. Then the software will perform thousands of simulations, making small changes until you get an optimized model. All I have to do is make a starter model in Onshape, import it into the software, add those forces and constraints, and then the generative design did the rest. It looks really natural, almost like coral. Why does it look like that? Well, when an engineer is modeling a design, it's typically very blocky because in mechanical CAD, it's time consuming to model organic surfaces like this. You would need to perform many simulations as you modeled to maintain the strength of the design. Generative design is able to make more fluid designs that would take a human much more time to create. 
Interesting. So what kinds of things are designed with this method? Currently, generative design is used in cutting-edge automotive and aerospace engineering, where it's critical to reduce weight while maintaining the strength of the design. Awesome. Well, thanks for bringing out your design today. It was really interesting to see. Thank you for having me. It's always interesting to see other people's designs. Hearing them talk about their approach is a great learning opportunity. If you design your own phone stand, we'd love to see it and hear about your approach. Take a picture or a video and share it with us on Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag MyOnShape.